Welcome to Paris, France for a very special episode of Bookends with Not Just Any Book Club as we are all whisked away um, by a French film by the name of The 400 Blows uh, into the life of a young Parisian. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, that basically cover, covers that. Yeah. Um, I'm Justin. Pierce. I'm Pierce. Yeah, yeah and we're, we're we're discussing the 400 blows. Yes. Um, because it's coming of age month. Aha. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, the movie's also very slice of uh, life, which which yeah. may or may not be another topic we have coming up later. But two for, for now, one. yeah, two for one. But for now, uh, 400 blows fits perfectly into coming of age. Yeah, um, this is um, a first time watch for Pierce, um, and this is my second time watching it. And I've matured since then, um, because I think we're, we're both in tandem here. Because, I mean, we agree more often than not, just um, off the podcast, we, we disagree on a lot of, st- on a lot of stuff. But here, we're, we, we both really love this movie, or really yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. F- fil- film-wise, I feel like we're pretty in line. Book-wise, not so much. Yeah, yeah, there's some debate Not so there. much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um yeah um the first time i watched this i i felt like it was something very special but like i don't know i, I didn't vibe with it and the second time it. i didn't <laughs> get it yeah but <laughs> even at the time it was one of the few films that like i was so transfixed by um its directorial style like there's not mm. even a thought in my head i was like wow this is like i wasn't even thinking it was good or bad it was just hypnotizing it was so good, and I think this is still probably one of the best direct films I've seen that like doesn't do anything extravagant. It's very minimalistic, and yeah, I, I watching it again was such a huge surprise and such a pleasant surprise actually because I, I didn't realize how much I could love a movie um, as much. Yeah, I think um, some of the artistry that goes on behind some of these uh, these types of films, these these films with with less plot, very focused on one character whether it's their coming of age story or something else um i think the cinematography and the choices made there in in these films are very interesting um because it's 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 often quite well shot there's something creative uh about it there's there's a sense of a distinct sense of style usually um after sun comes to mind as another example always got to bring that one up um yeah. there there's there's usually a distinct sense of style that the that the director really kind of infuses into this kind of like slice of life. Um I don't want to say plot less, but but definitely less heavy heavily plotted mm-hmm. um movie uh which I I think it's really interesting to see exactly how they um you know shoot every scene, the cinematography and everything with that. Yeah. There's a there's a good reason for that. Um I don't know if you're familiar with the, the term or the movement French New Wave, um, but this is like the prototype. This is like the mm. eponymous film uh, or the ep- epitome. Sorry, not eponymous, but the, the epitome of the French New Wave. Um, I think I don't think this was the first film, but I think it is probably the defining film. Um, and basically, this was um, an era of um, French cinema and it had an impact on the worldwide just cinema uh, in general. Um in terms of just like um it, it was a reaction to um post-war europe um and they're dis- disillusioned especially with the artifice of everything so um what this film movement um really emphasized was like shooting on um on scene um not having sets um basically no artificial sets no artificial lighting well very at least reducing it a lot and um having very realistic acting and perhaps even having no name actors like we saw here um, and the director behind this, Francois Truffaut, um, was probably the pioneer of this. Um, probably not the nicest guy. Uh, he hasn't done anything controversial. He was just kind of a big jerk. Um, he he um, was a film critic at Cannes, I think. Um, one of those fr- um, French film festivals during this period of time. Um, and he, would, he was very caustic. He would um, just basically berate every single film. Um, he was one of the harshest film critics ever, I think. Um, and he was that's, actually quite infamous. It's interest. That's interesting. It's interesting that you say that just because I not being, I mean, I know what the French new wave is, but I, this is the first 
I, th- I yeah. think this is the first French New Wave film I've actually seen. Even so, I have heard of this director before, and he's, I mean, he's quite well known, right? Like, he, the, this yeah. isn't well, like a one hit wonder for him. This is, he's, he's made quite a few films yeah. that are considered to be very, very good. Yeah. Um, it's him and Godard as like the two, um, like defining directors. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So basically, he, he, um, while he was a film critic, he kind of earned the nickname because of so, how caustic and harsh and mean he was. The grave digger of the French cinema. So, oh God. Yeah, he, he wasn't very nice. So basically, I, I don't know if it was a bunch of directors, but a bunch of directors, um, or possibly one, basically just said to him, hey, why don't you do something better? And we got this film. So, <laughs> which is really funny to me. Um, <laughs> hey, why don't, if you, if you think you can do so much better, then go do it. And he goes and he makes like one of the most influential and like, critically acclaimed films ever yep <laughs> so yeah that, that that's my personal like story behind this um that there's a lot more I, I we'll get into later um but what he really emphasized was like again shooting on set um he emphasized realism and he also experimented with a lot of new approaches to like editing um then he would cast amateur actors uh the kid i forgot the kid's name uh we'll probably get brought up later uh, like the, in the real actor. life or in the oh yeah the yeah yeah um Jean Pierre Lloyd something like that is that his yeah name? something like that sure sure <laughs> yeah um yeah he he had no prior acting experience but he blew it out of the park here I would think um basically he he would I think there was some professional act most of the time it was just all amateur actors um so. I was yeah. yeah no I was pretty blown away by the performances actually I, I wasn't yeah. expecting to be but I I especially like I don't know I've seen um I don't know I I just every time I I put on a black and white film I'm either like completely blown away by a lot of aspects of it or I'm like like this is kind of bad <laughs> like either okay. either one um. Yeah, and and uh, obviously in this case it's the it's the former here. <laughs> yeah, thankfully so. And yeah, uh, I, I yeah, um, th- this is I think probably one of the best movies to start off with as well. It's not too complex. Um, it is I I want to say slow, but it's like it's very medium pace. It can kind of lull you into um, you know, really liking this um kind of film. Um, mostly because this was like I again I this movie kind of pioneered jump cuts it mm-hmm. was that and godard with the um i forgot what other movie he made um but basically he was experimenting with editing as well um it wasn't the they're shooting on sets and they only had one camera and it, was, it wasn't like a rehearsed play is what i'm saying uh i think this was probably as impactful as citizen kane probably and mm-hmm. it, it's weird to say that because orson well when orson wells when you think of him you think of these grandiose camera movements and everything um but here it's very restrained um they're almost the opposite of each other, but I think Orson Welles and Francois Truffaut knew each other and they got along well. Um, him and Spielberg th- got along very well. Right. Yeah. Um, I should also say that I, there's something else that kind of creeps up on you because I feel like for the first half, two thirds, almost three quarters of the movie, you're I was almost kind of mesmerized by it, like um, just following basically Antoine's life up to yeah. you know up to the 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 certain point um which which i'm sure we'll get to in a second yeah. and then immediately after that it's it's very heavy and very thought it asks you to 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 be very thoughtful about everything that's going on yes. as yes. he's kind of completing his coming of age and becoming an adult yeah. in the last like third or quarter of the movie yeah um speaking about him becoming an adult um so th- I think this is um it, this is the first movie in a series of five films I believe where um they use the same actor and same character um and oh. they show him yeah it shows him up all to middle aged um but you wouldn't be- believe what these kinds of movies are like that's well that's all- <laughs> that's really funny because before we started recording we were talking about all of the like famous people who love this movie and we yeah. were, we started talking about Richard Linklater. 
<laughs> so that's, that, that is actually really funny. So they're all romantic comedies. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> but apparently they're also really good. Like, okay. I haven't seen them. I heard they're very good. Um, but it's such a bizarre way of just like following up the sequel with a completely different genre. It's like the Terminator 1, Terminator 2 kind of way. Except the opposite, lighter and softer. It well, works, I guess. Because the ending of this is 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 pretty heavy for what it is. <laughs> so so to go from this to like, haha, we're in love. Isn't this so yeah. funny? Um, yeah. Um <laughs> I've heard. I haven't seen it yet, so you know, your mileage may vary. Or take this for a grain of salt. But like, again, we'll, we'll get into the film um, soon. But basically, the isolation that he, um, the character, feels um, here is played for drama. It's played for tragedy. The second film, it's all played for comedy. <laughs> so, wow. Okay. And it's good, apparently. Yeah. I mean, hey, yeah. if it's if it's good, then what? Well, who are we to who are we to judge? I <laughs> guess if they pull it off. Yeah. Um, before we get into the plot, um, the quote unquote plot, um, do you know what the title is? Because yes, I don't get the I, title. I I remember I I, I remember I, I said something to you and I was looking at the original title and then I was like, oh, no, wait, it's the 400 blows when we were oh, originally yeah. talking about doing this because you were confused at yeah. first. Um, it's like we're gonna butcher it <laughs> it's something like god there, there's like a couple a couple translations i've seen yeah um so it's, like one I, one i saw video. was to raise hell yes. um i'm seeing i saw that from criterion and then uh, the other one that i saw uh was something like to to live life like something something like mm. that um th- that's the literal translation and the, yeah. the 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 actual words is uh it's like the 400 something blows uh but it but it the what they actually mean by that figure of speech is um so it's living life uh in a certain kind of way or to raise hell it's it's a weird it does it doesn't exactly translate very well, which is why yeah, yeah. we have the title "The Four Hundred Blows," which doesn't really make sense in English, anyways, just on its own. It's a unique title. Yep. But um, yeah. Uh, basically, it was um, it was a French idiom that means to raise hell. Um, somewhere there there's the the word 400 blows" in there, perhaps. It's not a direct translation. I I think it was "Wild Oats." as the um actual little translation but they kind of rebuffed that and they were like all right 400 blows i have no idea how those two names you can get those mixed up but apparently <laughs> i yeah i don't get it anyways um that, that's a lot of background to this movie and th- there there's a backstory to this entire film as well uh it will this movie is semi autobiographical, so I think I'll try to touch on the points um as I um as we discuss the plot. Um I I'll I, I haven't read any of his books. Um he's written plenty of books on cinema and probably his life. Um I don't got time for that. <laughs> so Yeah. Alright. Let's let's do the plot. So um, we we start off the movie with credits, um, as films from this era did. Um, mm-hmm. There is a shot of the Eiffel Tower uh, as usual. Um, <laughs> so you really know we're in Paris. Yeah, yep. yeah. And basically, Antoine jo- Antoine. Okay, we'll just go with that. Joanel. Um, he um is basically he um he is misunderstood. He's a average kid ordinary kid that no one understands um his parents um basically aren't very um very cooperative with them he uh antoine skips school a lot and um he just his, he, his sorry his parents yeah. are the relationship with them is weird because uh, i mean we're gonna get to this we find out later that his father is actually his stepfather um yeah and uh which which we will get to um 
<laughs> but even his his mom seems to like be abnormally upset with him for whatever reason. Yeah, almost disproportionately. Right, um, exactly. Yeah, it is um kind of I think it's implied that I, I think this is actually kind of confirmed that like she had him out of wedlock and right. there's a bit of yes. pain there. Yeah, that's so. why that's why she's kind she seems kind of grateful to the to the stepfather because uh because she when when she uh, she talks about it briefly because you know she he got with her to help raise him basically it seems yeah um all right so uh after we go to paris um and we 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 go into this classroom where basically the students um pass around a uh they're, they're taking a test and um they're they're passing a picture of a model and um i think he draws a mustache on the model uh with a pen and basically he gets caught by the teacher uh, immediately almost um and basically the the teacher sends him to sit in the corner and put on a dunce hat essentially mm -hmm. um and he just has to write a poem about the wall um a uh, poem on the wall yeah. on the fact about the fact that he's been unfairly punished um and i think he has to skip recess as well yeah he does uh yeah. but <clears throat> I mean, basically that <laughs> I mean, we can go a little in depth on some of it, but that covers like a good portion of the movie that he repeatedly gets in trouble at home uh, and at school. And sometimes he, he does wrong. And at other times adults are yelling at him for no reason. Um, yeah. Like he just gets on his mom's nerves or whatever. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, writing on the wall is, is wrong and he gets punished for that he yeah. has to like scrub it off um yeah. there's some some other things as well if you want to go in depth on any yeah. specific one yeah um I, I i'm gonna say that the teacher doesn't seem very interested in like helping him out and becoming a better person yes it's, just, it's always about control um which always doesn't which doesn't seem to work because the kids are rambunctious and cantankerous mm -hmm. and all these big words they're, they're, they're basically just like very disruptive in the classroom um so after he skips recess, um, they all recite. Uh, the teacher recites the poem um, and they ask everyone to copy it down. But Antoine is still in the corner; he has to clean it off. So basically, that's a setting the fact that he's he likes to rebel. So then Antoine goes home um, and he takes honey, a money that was like hidden within like a mantle, uh, and he sets the table for dinner and um, and he um, has to get flour um for from the store from his mother um and take out the garbage and then we see that um when the mother comes back um he's she's basically very rude to him um she's just like wow why did you forget to bring flour or something like that um and then we get to get some insight the fact that just like she's just rude and she there's not much love there i i would say she's just very rude to him mm -hmm. so um yeah, and so um I forgot what happens next. It doesn't um after this movie's very light on plot. You get more Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. so so he he skips school the next day. They go out, they have uh largely a good time. I think his parents fight also the night that night. Um Yeah. And then he goes to school. He tells the teacher uh that his mother died and that's why he skipped so he could get out of being punished for it um mm -hmm. and it, his parents come in and his dad slaps him um yeah and this kind of this is the first i would say major major event where the it feels like the teacher is all over him uh, and he's upset with his parents uh, but because yeah. of this embarrassment, he runs away for the night, and uh, he, his friend, um, kind of helps him out and gets him, finds him a, a nice spot in a printing plant, uh, and then the next day, obviously he goes back to school after running away, and so his mom comes and picks him up, and then she's very loving for once. Um, mm -hmm. the first time basically we've seen him, seen her be loving towards him in the movie. Uh, she makes a deal that if he's top five on his next essay, she'll give him some money, 
a lot of money. Um, yeah. Does a he get very chunk of money for a kid? He does get very inspired by this one author who has a very funny name, Honor de Balzac. Yep. Yep. He gets very inspired. He reads a bunch of his poems. Um, he starts worshiping him, like Pierce does to Kafka. Has a shrine. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> has a shrine and lights a candle. Um, it's basically just like he's taking, he reads a bunch of his poems and he kind of, I think he found his niche. He finds his author and he's like, man, I'm going to start writing. And he really does try. He really tries his hardest to um, create this amazing essay. Um, and at class, he does it. But um, it, it's, it's, um, it's a plagiarized. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the teacher claims that it is plagiarized. Um, there, it, it didn't seem like he had anything at his desk. Uh, maybe he did it on an accident. Maybe he didn't yeah. do it at all. And the teacher is falsely accusing him. I don't think it's ever confirmed one way or another. But well, they, they received his... the poem at the beginning, right? Do they? Is the same? Oh, poem? At the, before, before the scene, I think they they re recite the first couple lines, and then the teacher recites the first couple lines. Um, so I think that's how, and that's how he was able to catch him because it was like, wow, this is one of his famous poems. Mm. I believe I believe that was that. Um, the, the thing is, it's like well, uh, again, he, re he he recites it in, so he recites it because he he claims that he plagiarized. And then the teacher says, like, the first couple lines of the essay. Mm -hmm. um, and then Antoine's friend is like, I was sitting right next to him. How could he have plagiarized? Like, I would have seen him uh, probably pull pretending for memory. something out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I don't know. See, okay, per perhaps, thing... perhaps, it, perhaps he did plagiarize. I, I, I don't know. I, it felt to me like he was abnormally upset for someone who got caught in doing something actually wrong. I know some people's reaction to being caught is to dig their heels in, but, but I don't know some, some, the way he reacted to me felt like he was being wrongfully accused and he thought that he was doing the right thing um, by, by recusing himself, but maybe I missed something and maybe he did actually plagiarize. The way I interpret that scene is like, you know, once you see this great movie or something and when you're a kid, you're so impressionable that you're like, man, I want to write something exactly like that. I'm um, like, wow, I just mm. saw, I mean, I just saw the Avengers and this teacher's telling me to write something. I'm going to write myself becoming Spider-Man and getting ripped by Spider. Something like that. And like, I don't know, kids don't know. <laughs> Kids don't know better. When I was that age, I was writing fan fiction myself becoming a superhero. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little, maybe I shouldn't have said that. One. But, <laughs> no. but I don't know. They're a kid, and I, I'm guessing they're so inspired. Like this teacher should be thankful the fact that he's just reading a poet outside of the education curriculum, and the fact that you know this poet is not like the equivalent of Dr. Seuss or whatever. It's like actually a very higher level thing, and I, I think this is showing that Antoine is actually, um, you know, he does show intelligence. Um, he and, is capable of something higher yeah. should it be actually, yeah. should there be an attempt to actually pull that yeah. out of him from the adults around him, but none of them are willing to. Yeah, I don't want to slap every adult in this, <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's kind of the thing. Like, he, he expresses an interest in, very early on in, in kind of getting on with life growing up and going to work. Um, and he's told no, but at the same time, the adults in his life are unwilling to actually help him, um, mm -hmm. do the things that they, they think he should do that they're, they're telling him to do, uh, outside of the only encouragement he ever gets in this regard is from his mom with the, the thousand francs. Um, yeah. and, and that's I very brief and she doesn't really do much encouraging outside of that for like the rest of the movie. I would say that there's a little bit of the father um, before, you know, he gets angry at him for burning down, almost burning down the house. There's a little mm -hmm. bit where they, they show a bit of a relationship. Um, but that goes all out the window when he, you know, disproportionately starts slapping him. So there, there's that. Um, again, side note here. Um, Truffaut um, really did um, pull from his life. Um, again, he called this film semi-autobiographical uh, because he didn't have a father figure. Um, really, 
and he was um born out of wedlock um and he was passed around various nannies he grew up with, with grandparents and when they they passed away um he went back to live with his parents who did not really want him and they were not very supportive of him they didn't really show much loving or affa- um, affection because whenever they would go on vacation they would just leave him at home um, i'm guessing that he um tried to stay I'm not guessing. No, he um he did try to le- um stay out of his house as much as he can. Um, I think he would also skip school. Um, he did eventually just start teaching himself stuff, but he would just not be in school. Um, not be at home. Basically, he was just um not. Uh, again, it's very reflected upon the movie, so kind of adds another layer of depth here. Um, and um, th- there was um. He did have a good friend um, named Robert Lackany, 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 um, who who was um, basically whoever um, Antoine's friend was. That was Rene. So, Rene, yes. So that was him right there, um, uh, inspired by. So he's kind of immortalized in the film, which is kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one important thing to say as well is that he would skip school and sneak into movie theaters. So. Not something right there. Okay. Well, um, right. So plagiarism scandal happens, and then he, Antoine, essentially quits school. And he's like, if I quit school, I can't go home. So Rene offers him a, uh, a room in his parents' house. Um, something that I noticed is that Rene's family seems to be quite a bit better off than. Antoine's family. I don't know how much better off, but but whatever. I remember that first scene where um, R- him and Renee are stealing some money. Um, Renee knows where it is, so I assumed it was uh, someone related to Renee, whether it was his mom or yeah. whoever. Um, and uh, he's stealing it, and uh, the house is, uh, seems much bigger than uh, Antoine's house. I mean, they have a vacant room for Antoine to sleep in. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, with with a statue of a where, tire. whereas, and yeah, whereas Antoine just sleeps in the like entryway of his ap- apartment. Yeah. Um, and they, I mean, they have fun there. They they gamble mm-hmm. a bit. They mm-hmm. start smoking a cigarette. They smoke cigars cars. and drink yeah. wine, as every normal kid does at that age. Yeah. Um. Then, around they, that age, some of them start looking to uh, to experiment with that kind of stuff. So yeah, especially I'm sure I'm sure in France it's probably even younger than here. They're looking to experiment with that kind. Oh, of Oh yeah, that is true. Yeah, me being culturally ignorant. <laughs> yeah, um, um, they 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 do um, hide around, or at least do they try to hide Antoine? I don't think he gets caught. I think he. They had a really he does not. Problem. He does not get caught up until the next thing that they try to do, which is they try and steal and sell a typewriter. They can't sell it. Oh. So w- when they go to return it, that is when Antoine gets nabbed. Well, the, yeah. So the thing is, um, they they kept on tempting with the the fact that you know they could just leave the typewriter since they're not going to get money for it. Right. Um. But him, sh- um, Antoine saying no, we we got to return this thing. Yeah. So yeah. him trying that, to do that, right that was something I yeah, that was something I caught that Antoine was like trying to do the the moral and right thing and he gets um pinched for it. <laughs> yeah. Um No, I mean obviously he immor did committed an immoral action trying to get the typewriter. Uh yeah. but he but he he went back on it and he tried to do the right thing and he paid the price. Yeah. For trying to do the right thing. Yeah. Um so essentially he gets nabbed and um I, yeah, and then he um kind of gets put in jail. Um and they they are kind of meet I don't know if they, they take his mugshot here. Um or was that at the Yeah, point? but it, it's all it's all a part of this sequence where yeah. I mean his his stepdad and then the police and then later his mom who visits him at the camp are all kind of mean to him. Yeah. Um, they they lump him with a bunch of crooks in the same jail, yep. jail cell and it's very tiny. It's a very cramped and it's not treated with much humanity. And then when it gets overcrowded, they, they kick the kid out and they put him in an even smaller um, jail cell. Yep. Which 
yeah, not 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 very cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, after all that's happening, he um gets put in a police car, and he starts just um, tearfully um just looking at the world through uh his last chance at seeing um, Paris through bars, and he starts crying a bit. I think this is the only time I actually do see him cry. Mm -hmm. um become emotionally affected because his entire life is just about to um be changed forever um and there's nothing you can do about that and it really dawns upon him that the fact that like there's nothing he can do it's very sad um yeah and then gets sent to um a reform school i believe after this yeah some kind of uh, like camp where they observe juvenile like delinquents ju yeah. like ju juvie juvenile yeah center. Yeah, um, uh, it's down by the coast. Like his mom requested from the judge for some reason, um, and he goes there. And uh, there's this long sequence with the psychologist, where she's asking him a bunch of questions about his home life and the 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 crime he committed and all that. And uh, he reveals that he knows a lot more than he probably should. Like he knows that uh his father is not really pro is probably not really his biological father and he yeah. knows that um his mom wanted to abort him during pregnancy and um it kind of the way that i interpreted that was that we were being given like a basically like a a list of things that happened to antoine that kind of <laughs> let him down this path to this point and he if he had maybe gotten support for these things earlier uh he would yeah. not be where he is yeah something we um kind of glossed over or didn't really mention at all is the fact that he did kind of catch his mother um having an affair and oh reason. true was, yeah yeah as he was skipping school yes. um, with his friend yeah um which i i don't think they he uses that to like blackmail his mom which would be kind of messed up but like yeah yes it was very cool. but it it also does kind of um uh not it doesn't completely take everything away from it but it does it does kind of take a little bit away from the scene where she's being really affectionate with him um i i know at the back of my mind i was like oh she knows that he knows that she's having an affair mm -hmm. um but i don't know I don't know if there was so much focus on that during that scene, but it was definitely at the back of my mind when yeah. I was seeing it. Yeah. Um, I, I Again, that's supposed to add some complexity because I think, at least the two parents, they're able to ha um, have moments of loving and then have moments of um, anger, or just like disproportionate anger, because mm -hmm. um, again, like I said, the, the father or the stepfather, um, they basically just... Um, he he. I think most of the time they show him being kind, except you know when he does something wrong, and then that's when he gets very just like, you know, very aggressive. Like when he almost burns down the house, um, with the candles, um, honoring De Balzac. Um, he basically um slaps him, but the mother comes in and just says, um, everything's all right. Um, let's calm down. And in one of the few moments um that actually do show them being a loving family is when they see a movie together. Um, and it's not played with any irony or any tragedy. They are actually having fun together. And I think even he mentions, um, Antoine mentions that, you know, he, he really liked the depth of the movie and the emotional impact that it's had on him. So again, at 12, um, he has some very good emo uh, emotional intelligence right there as well. So again, I, I think it's supposed to show that the, um, the relationship of a family um, or parents love towards a child and vice versa can be dynamic, um, mm -hmm. which I it's often not a one note thing. Um, and I, I know it's sometimes very hard to show on film, but um, especially in such a realistic way. But I think that's that, that, that was awesome. Yeah, um, right. Well, and, and the parents are also quite troubled themselves. Yeah. Like they live in this tiny apartment. Um, you know, she she had a child out of wedlock and kind of ended up in the situation because of that. And mm -hmm. the, you know, the stepfather didn't have to do this. He never, he never had to do what he did. Um, he did it probably out of love for Antoine's mother, but also uh, just 
trying to do a, a good thing for him. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, that probably adds to his anger when Antoine does the wrong thing. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I've done way more for you than I ever needed to do, than I was ever required to do. And this mm-hmm. is like the thanks I get, like a disrespectful like child who doesn't do as he's told. Yeah, that is also true. Um, yeah. So now we're going to go back to the, the final act of the film. Yes. Um, <laughs> he's at the reform school, um, at the boarding school, and it's very dreary. They don't mm-hmm. treat him any better there. Um, again, the mother requests the fact that, um, you know, he has the reform school by the shore. Um, and I think one, his friend uh, visits him, um, but they, he tries to, but they, they shoot him away. So that, I guess he can't really explain himself. And then his mother comes in and um, I forgot what she said, but like probably wasn't very pretty because it, she was just telling him, like, yeah, we're not getting you out of here. Yeah, she she was pretty rude. She basically was like, "Well, you got your wish. You're you're gonna see what real work is." Basically, like you're yeah. you're you're done with school. You're gonna get on with your life and work. Yeah. Um. And then, um. Uh, eventually, he's had. He just said enough is enough. And um. Eventually, just during one day, um. During recess or playing outside or whatever. He slides under the fence, and and probably one of the most famous sequences from the film, he runs for a solid 15, uh, not 15 minutes, well, that's way too long, uh, for a <laughs> solid five minutes, uncut. Um, he's just running all the way down, trying to for freedom. He doesn't know what to do next. He's been running, runs down the forest, ends up on the beach, and basically he's stopped by the water. And now, uh, I'm unsure what to do. He looks towards the camera and freeze frame, and it ends. And there's kind of a pained look on his face, I would say. Yes. Um, I I will yeah. also say the running was actually, um, you know, it, was, it started going on for long enough that I was like, oh, okay, so this is what we're doing. And then, yeah. um, and then it it hit me that it was actually like really powerful. Yeah. Um, if, I I don't know if you noticed the editing through the the film, but um. Francois Truffaut, um, specifically, um, edit, uh, I don't know who edited this film, but he made sure that the film was um, basically had a bunch of long takes, long cuts, and this is why you're so immersed in the film. And there was that one, uh, I, I there was one jump cut I saw uh, that that tried to mask the fact that um, it was supposed to be in one take. Um, it, it happened earlier in the film, but basically he emphasized the fact that it should at least give the illusion of having several long takes. So it immerses you in the film more, so it feels more mm. real, so you're not cutting in between stuff. Um, right. there, there's several things like that um, throughout the film. Um, there's one where it um, basically shoots from his point of view um, when he's talking to his mom, and the camera pans up because he's just losing interest and pans up to the um, kind of her forehead and to the hat because, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's losing interest and we're kind of losing interest. Um, th- th- those are some of the 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 really cool cinematography things that I saw. Anyways, back to the ending. I just wanted to mention that somehow. Yeah. You insert right so, in there. so I I think for me, what I, something I'm gonna throw in here real quick is um <clears throat> the pained look on his face was or mm-hmm. however you would describe that um I think was was uh I I really liked that touch um this kind of final few scenes of the movie uh, clearly to me was like he is being forced into adulthood, probably younger than he should be, not quite um, the maturity level he should be as he's coming into adulthood, but he, but he is being forced there and he's coming to terms with that fact. Um, Mm -hmm. And the look on his face towards right at the end on the beach, being unsure of what to do. um, This isn't something that, I'm going to be able to um, talk about at length, um, but I would because uh, I, I read I'm re- I read philosophy, but I'm not quite to this point yet. I haven't read any Sartre, but um, I did see someone talking about online comparing it to um, something that Sartre wrote, which was basically like. Um, man is is condemned to be free. Uh, and so he's finally gotten his 
his freedom from uh you know these the obviously the police officers who he was just in custody of um and, but also his his parents and those relationships and his teacher uh and now he is not sure what to do and that anxiety that's kind of piling on him in this moment that he's finally you know realized that he's he's free and he's again he's an adult much younger than he should be or becoming an adult much yeah. younger than he should be um all of that is piling on him onto him and he is in the words of Jean Paul Sartre condemned to be free from this point on that is very wonderfully put um yeah no, that is essence but also i believe probably not as well worded as you thought um as you put it there um but yeah it, it's not a happy look um no <laughs> no definitely not he's kind of trapped um by the ocean and he's like he has to turn back um there's no way out of this mm. um so it's just it's like the world's cosmically against him he has to head back um, despite even trying to be good, and I think he's again, he is capable of being a good person. It's just you know, society keeps on continually punishing him for it. So he, he's he's capable of being, I mean, even more than a good person, like a yeah, of uh, you know, better than very the adult. very successful, right? But better yeah. than the adults around him. Um, very successful too. He's capable of a lot of things, I think, pretty clearly. But it's just, man, his his parents just keeping him down his parents yeah. and his teacher yeah um i mean I, i'm glad to know that the sequels kind of you know address that i don't I, <laughs> i'm just surprised that the sequels are good <laughs> but yeah do they yeah. do they address it or do they just be like nah it's yeah. it's funny now <laughs> it's funny <laughs> yeah um I, I i got nothing else to add to that um, but I, I also do want to say, um, probably the, the best part of the film is the fact that like it's able to have like an ebb and flow of like you know, mon- not mundanity, but just like you know, scenes of just children vibing out, and then um, and then you know, scenes of tragedy. Like there, there's that one sequence where he's basically just chilling at probably the, one of the most dangerous um, amusement park rides in the world, mm-hmm. that spinning thing, where it just gets stuck in the wall and starts defying gravity. I, mean, I I think that was an actual thing. I don't know why. I don't know who. It oh, was right, 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 right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, they we have the same thing now, but you're usually like, it's it's more safe now. Um, it, yeah, you're I mean, on. there it was. Yeah. yeah, there it was literally just like a wall, and you could turn upside down, and then if it stops, you just fall or die. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, you just fall on your head if you're if, like, yeah. I I remember yeah. what scene you're talking about. Um, yep. another the last thing that I will probably say about this is that like, even if you're not into, um, analyzing movies to to the level that I've, uh, we I don't think we've done we've done a, a a hugely amazing analysis or anything here, but we have done some analysis. Even if you're not into analysis to the level that we've done it here, um, I put this movie on Saturday morning, and uh. My girlfriend and my mom just randomly sat down and I was like, okay, you guys can watch this movie if you want. I don't know if you'll be interested at all. And they sat there. Um, I think my mom had to do something, but uh, they sat there for pretty much the whole movie, just watched it and enjoyed it. Uh, they had no idea what they were sitting down to watch and uh, they still they still really seem to enjoy it. Wow. So, that, that is news to me, guys. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I, I just think it's, it's a, it's a really great mesmerizing movie. Like it's, it's not, yeah. um, e- yeah, even on surface level. Um, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, it's, it, it's just a really good watch. Um, mm-hmm. I, yeah, it's definitely one of those French New Wave films that are not pretentious at all. Um, and actually just holds up, um, very well, actually. So, yeah, give it a watch. Um, even if you described it, you know, very meticulously. Um, even knowing everything that happens, it's just um, probably yeah. You, you'll you'll be able to enjoy it. Um, no, oh, yeah, as much as any modern film today, as we saw here or you heard here. Yeah, uh, this is this is one that I probably will go back and rewatch at some point. Like it's it, it was, and I or I could watch the sequel. <laughs> the sequel. <laughs> um, 
I, uh, you know, there, there's so much to watch and read and, and play and consume nowadays that uh, I, I, I don't particularly, I don't, sometimes I end up going back to stuff, but I don't usually like plan to do it. And uh, I would really like to go back and watch, rewatch this at some point. It was that good. You heard it here, folks. And <laughs> <laughs> all right. So social media plugs. Yes. Um, well, actually, we want to say what next week is. Oh, yes. So next week, uh, I mean, it's coming of age. Um, I will be talking about the sorrows of young Werther by oh, Gert- Goethe. I'll, Wolfgang Goethe. I'm going to be talking about Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer, potentially, t- potentially if I get to the second book. Still on the first book. I have. It's been a busy, busy last week of summer. Mm-hmm. We'll get there. Yep. Uh, um, and then uh, you can follow us on X, X. <laughs> Twitter. I'll never get old. Um, and uh, TikTok at not just any pod. Any pod. Um, and on we, YouTube. And on YouTube as well. If you're not already listening on YouTube, we now are also posting all of our stuff to YouTube. Speaking of that, whatever platform you're listening on, please give a like, follow, subscribe, whatever it is on whatever platform. We really do appreciate it. It helps us out. Um, and yeah. Goodbye, Prometheus. Au revoir, Prometheus. Oh, yeah, and there's that too. <laughs>